Well, my goodness, we've got our first sneak peek at the new Asus ROG Ally, and it's got a black shell. Let's cover everything we need to know about the new Asus ROG Ally update. It's not the ROG Ally 2, but it is a new ROG Ally. Let's get into it, at least, okay. So kudos to Retro Game Core for basically letting me know this happened. So according to this article, The Verge covered it. The next ROG Ally will have the same chip, the same screen, sub substantially larger battery, which is something, let's be honest, we've all been asking for, and more RAM, so potentially 32 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM, which is amazing. Finally, a lot of people have been asking for that, and a lot of people require that if they're going to be using their handheld as a full-fledged desktop gaming PC but also use it for productivity. A lot of these apps require bigger, you know, more RAM, specifically 32 gigs and above. Um, so it's going to have a new M.2 2280 drive, a new SD card placement. We all know, we all know why that is, right? Because people were putting their expensive micro SD cards in their ROG Ally and weeks, months later of running games on the micro SD, micro SD started to fail because the SD card slot was overheating, which sucked. And a lot of people had to RMA theirs in for this issue. And it's still is an issue to this day. So thankfully, they finally fixed that. And it's gonna have a new black shell color. So I think that maybe they've seen, they, maybe they were inspired just a little bit by the MSI claw potentially. But honestly, I'm frankly, I'm happy about that because I'm just not a fan of white plastic games consoles because they get stained over time, the yellow over time. I thought it was a weird choice when they came out with that original ROG Ally as, you know, with a white color, but maybe they're all, maybe they were already thinking ahead of the new ROG Ally 2 or the, in this case, ROG Ally X, and we'll get into more about it in a second. Um, it's going to have tweaks to its control, so hopefully whole sensor sticks, and of course, a higher price tag. So more or less, same screen, bigger battery, more RAM, new M.2 drive, new SD card placement, to prevent your SD card from heating up and failing, um, and obviously a black shell color. So tweaks, improvements across the board, and they've also got a new eye which they've announced and which we'll cover in this video. But let's get a look at the article. So this comes from The Verge. So Asus's next ROG Ally handheld will be the ROG Ally X. Before it begins work on an ROG Ally 2, Asus wants to ship an improved version of the original. Now let's be honest, the Asus ROG Ally was pretty successful. I did have one, ended up selling it just because I use my Steam Deck more often. But they are. They the Asus ROG Ally, for a lot of people, was their first foray into handheld gaming. And I think overall, in terms of the software, the armory crate, and the tools and tweaks and stuff that they pushed out, it was pretty successful. Yes, 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 it ran Windows. No, Windows isn't suited to a, a touchscreen. <laughs> no matter how many people argue it is, it's not. At least not yet. It's still functional. It's just not there yet. But it was overall a pretty successful handheld. Um, and a lot of people to this day prefer to have Asus ROG Ally over something like the Steam Deck just for that flexibility of being able to run Windows games, any game on Windows, including ones with DRM that you can't play on things like Linux and SteamOS, like Call of Duty. Um, like a lot of big D you know, DRM online multiplayer competitive games that you can't play on Steam OS via Proton. Um, a lot of people like that flexibility on Windows, and I don't, I don't blame them. It's nice to have. But Asus did a good job of bridging, you know, that, you know, the Windows or sort of handheld console form factor with the Armory Create overlay and all the little cool things you could do. So credits to them. Asus ROG Ally successful, and it must be pretty successful for Asus if they're going to release, obviously, a mid ref mid refresh, a mid cycle refresh with the ROG Ally X. So let's take a look and see what they have to say. So the Asus ROG Ally was the first true Steam Deck challenger. While I'd argue it fell a little bit short, it legitimately improved the state of affordable Windows handheld gaming with its plugged in performance boosts and smooth variable refresh rate. That was a big deal to me. When I played the Asus ROG Ally online, with, I'm sorry, when I played the Asus ROG Ally and I experienced even lower frame rate games, games that just didn't run too well, at least didn't run at 60, maybe ran around the 30 FPS mark, how smooth it was blew me away. And I'm a complete believer in VRR now, variable, variable refresh rate for those that don't know. Um, I need that in every handheld. And I think going forward, it's going to be more of a priority just because especially handhelds cannot be expected to run games at 60 plus 60 to 100 FPS in every game, especially new releases. So adding VRR just to smooth that thing, you know, smooth the gameplay out a little bit and make lower frame rates just more enjoyable and playable um, and comfortable, frankly, um, is a good thing. And I think Valve need to imp implement that in their next handheld. I think um, L Lenovo need to do that for their Lenovo Legion Go line. I think GPD and INEO are already doing that on theirs. So VRR 
is a necessity. A necessity, in my opinion. Let me know in your thoughts in the comments. Anyways, back to the back to the um, article. So now Asus is beginning to reveal its successor, the ROG Ally X. Don't call it an Ally 2. When it ships in the second half of the year, the Windows-based Ally X will have the same AMD Z1 Extreme chipset. I mean, they could have really, they could have really released a newer generation. I mean, they've got the new gen AMD Ryzen chips out now. I mean, they could have upgraded it. Maybe they just didn't want to, maybe they're not ready to announce the new Z2 yet. Um, and the same 7 inch, 4, 48 to 120 hertz VRR screen, good. I wish it was an OLED, they could have made it an OLED, but maybe, maybe they're saving that for the, the ROG Ally 2. Maybe that's what they're doing, all right? They, they're saving some of those goodies for the ROG Ally 2, maybe increasing the screen size, fingers crossed. I did post a poll on my um, YouTube community tab where I asked you guys what you guys wanted to see, and we'll take a look at that in a second to see how you guys voted. But as the article says, it's just not quite like the Steam Deck OLED where Valve got AMD to revise its chip for better battery life and stability and added a larger, brighter, gorgeous new OLED panel with improved response time and slimmer bezels. Um, so, according to the battery we're, the battery stats, we're not looking at a 30 to 40% more capacity, but the newly black colored handhead will have a substantial battery life improvement. Asus uh, Senior Vice President Sean Yen tells The Verge, because Asus will cram a substantially larger battery back into the Ally X's revised shell, we're not looking at 30 to 40% more capacity. We're not looking at 30 to 40% more capacity, he tells me. We're looking at way more than that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <sighs> Breathe. Asus won't. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he was going to let us down there and say we're not looking at thirty to forty percent more. We're looking at closer to ten to twenty. But no, he's saying way more than that. Interesting. Asus won't talk specific specs today. Instead, Yen asked me how much battery life I'd realistically like, like from a revised handheld. I would have to say unlimited battery life. Shove a nuclear generator in that bad boy and just let it run forever. That'd be awesome. That'd, that'd be the dream. Um, or whenever wireless charging, true wireless charging <laughs> comes into reality. Um, I'd say I'd want to double the worst case battery life to three hours since I'm currently seeing maybe one and a half in intensive games. And um, basically, Yen says it won't disappoint your worst case scenario. He says. So... Mm. So we're looking at maybe three hours minimum. That is nice. That's interesting. So maybe full pelt running the high end game, you know, high end game, really good graphics, high frame rate, full brightness. We're maybe looking at three hours minimum. Let's go. Um, he just won't talk specific specs today and said, Yen asked me how much battery life I'd realistically like from the revised handheld. I said I wanted. OK, so. I already read that, sorry, my bad. So this is maybe a sneak peek preview. Um, basically, the the other day, they teased this image, and if you zoomed into the image they were teasing, there was a little black Asus ROG Ally here. I'm sure that's not an MSI claw, although it might be. <laughs> you never know. Um, so that's a little sneak peek at it. So it's going to have that black shell. It's going to look pretty similar to the current model. Um, just a black shell basically and a lot of small t tweaks and improvements and a massive battery life upgrade. Yen says the battery life has been the single biggest request since launch. Asus have now seen the community sometimes straps giant, uh, has seen how the community sometimes straps giant external batteries to their handhelds even though Ally theoretically had room inside for a larger battery pack. So why didn't they put a larger battery pack in originally? That's my question. So were they planning, was this in their plan all along to release a revised Asus ROG Ally? Or could he just not get the supply for the larger battery pack? I don't know. Because there was a lot of space in the case. Unless they were worried about overheating or battery bulges and stuff. You know, who knows? When we launched the original Ally, we didn't have such a clear understanding that the battery might be something people desire more than later than a lighter weight. Okay, so, so basically what he's saying is that he, they weren't sure if people wanted more battery life or a lighter device. And I think with the Steam Deck being a larger, they were maybe going for the whole slimmer, leaner handheld, you know, route. Um, rather, you know, we think people might want a lighter handheld than a heavier handheld with a bigger battery. And I think now, obviously the community is like no we want bigger battery i think bigger battery is the most important thing um and it is up to an extent i mean if you can find a good balance to where this thing isn't like a boulder in your hand but also has really good battery life mwah. We'll be on to something. Um, so, battery isn't the only change Asus is talking about today. Ally X is about addressing many of the community's top priorities. Well, one of the top priorities for me was an OLED. Why is there an OLED in this? But okay, maybe an ROG Ally too. Um, for how to revise the original. We think about battery and storage, um, graphics and memory ports. So they, so they knew like 512 gigabyte to a terabyte is 
you know, it can get still get filled up pretty fast. Graphics, well, they're putting the same chip in this, so they never address that, obviously. Memory, yes, I think if you're going to be docking this thing to a couple of monitors, I think having more than 16 gigs of RAM is going to be really beneficial, especially if you're just wanting to use your ROG Ally as a desktop PC for productivity, for video editing, for photo editing, for 3D design, for art, you name it. You know, if you're going to be rendering things, you do need more RAM. So the option that, you know, being able to have more than 16 gigabytes is a necessity for those people. And a necessity for me, especially if you're going to be docking this thing up to like multiple monitors and, you know, having like a bunch of windows, a bunch of tabs open, doing multiple things at once, having more than 16 gigabytes is a necessity. Now, if you're going to be taking this thing seriously, so I'm glad they finally done that and another the elephant in the room and the thing i'm really wanting to know is are they going to put real usb-c4 in this thing to support external graphics amplifiers that are not their own proprietary one i sure hope so i really hope so i want to run this thing with like two three monitors maybe with an eGPU. that would be my dream i don't want to buy their asus external power gpu unit that costs like 1500 dollars that only has only serves one purpose and that is to use it with the rot ally no i want to build an e-gpu that works with any device that has USB C or thunderbolt right um so i really hope they've done that they're not telling us if they have yet i wouldn't be surprised if they don't but that was one of my biggest complaints um ports obviously it would be nice to have a second USB C port i think that would be a big deal they're not going into whether they have or not, we won't know till we see the device itself. Um, our goal is to fit as many of those as into possible, and many of those as possible into a device like this, says Asus Senior Product Manager Gabriel Meng. I think they are going to be holding on to, you know, holding on to a lot of these things like OLED, like more ports, maybe USB C um, that supports eGPU. I think they're going to be saving that for the ROG Ally 2. This is just like a mid mid generation refresh i think anyways no specs today but asus says the ally x should be ha should have more than its current 16 gigs of ram so that you can allocate lots of it lots of it to the gpu without impacting the rest of the system it should have a longer m.2 oh a longer m.2 slot so you're going to be able to put you know a lot more you're gonna have more variety for ssds you know full size ssds hopefully maybe not full size one maybe the the one that's larger than the one that's um than the 2280 that's in it right now um um, so buyers can easily find and purchase larger SSD upgrades um, than the current M.2. Oh, the 2230 is the one that's in it right now. So the next one's going to be 2280. Okay, so it's slightly bigger. Um, the Ally X should also ha uh, even be more repairable with redesigned joystick modules that are interchangeable and upgradable. Yes! I imagine if Ghoulie Kit steps up. Come on, Ghoulie Kit, give us those all sensor sticks, please. Well, I didn't get to see it for myself. Izzy said the handheld will be slightly heavier due to the larger battery. That's okay. I mean, it wasn't too heavy to begin with. With revised grips and slight tuning to things like the D-pad, joysticks, and triggers. Nice. I hope we're not going to have like a massive dead zone like we did when the first ROG Ally came out. That really killed games like Call of Duty on it. Um, so that is kind of exciting. Um, and well, Asus won't admit that the Ally's SD card reader ever had any fault. He tells me that it's the exact same SD card reader it uses in its laptops and says it doesn't believe any issues actually had to do with overheating. Really? Really, Asus? Tell that to the people on Reddit who had to RMA their device, who had to send their device in for repair, had to wait to enjoy their handheld because, and also lost money because their SD card got broken because of this thing. I'm pretty sure it was overheating. I mean, if the community did tests. It seemed like that was the, the case. The Ally X will have a rearranged motherboard layout that sounds like it'll move it away from the system vent, system's vents. Yes, smart move, smart move. We don't want people to think that's what we had to do, Meg says. Of course not, of course not, because they still want to sell the original one, right, of, of moving the SD reader. We had to move things around the board to make them fit. Okay, okay. Acer said that Ally X's improvements will come at a cost. Unlike the Steam Deck OLED, which largely largely replaced Valve's LCD model at the same price points, the Ally X will start at a higher price point than the original. The original 2023 ROG Ally will also continue to stick around and may see discounts. As far as ROG Ally 2 goes, Asus agrees that it has a similar philosophy to Valve. It wants to build a true successor when it can offer a significant performance boost, not just an incremental one. So they are going the same route as Valve and Nintendo. I don't think that's a bad thing. Let me know what you 
you think in the comments. Um, Asus doesn't plan to sell an aftermarket battery upgrade for original Ally buyers. It has a big software update coming for those buyers as well. Armory Create SE 1.5 is not only a fresh coat of paint and navigation improvements, it finally lets players share their button mappings for various games with other Ally owners. That is a big deal. Actually, you know what? Valve have already implemented that with Steam. So I'm glad that Asus is going to that going the same route and allowing the community to put up their own button mappings for certain games that that actually surprisingly was a big deal um and when i played the rog ally and i was surprised not to have that really without having to boot into steam and go into big 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 picture mode and do all that sort of stuff so while we're here let's just take a look at the new armory create se 1.5 update the next major software update arrives in july 2024 so a more intuitive ui and even more customization beautiful intuitive new interface design new layouts for game library make it easier to find your next game grid view list view list view is new horizontal view new or customize your own Ooh, okay new ways to find your game sort filter my favorites new um more functions under game profile like adding the game to my favorites nice you could have your favorite games at the front very good or at the top of the list new light mode option oh so we're gonna have a light mode as well light and dark mode light for the day dark mode for the night awesome a new function share your game profile button mappings with the community or use a game profile shared by others that is going to be super helpful for those old games that maybe don't have controller support and people have to map keys and you know pc inputs two buttons being able to have you know have the community to go to for that for these older games i think it's going to be a big deal turn afmf amd fluid motion frames on or off in a armor create um se uninstall games faster tap an option in ace uh, ac se armory create um or go right to windows installed apps window sweet so here's the new interface design that is very sleek okay Okay, I like it. A beautiful and more intuitive navigation view, five navigation items plus indicators such as time, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and battery. Control assistance showing you the current active options. Um, new, layout, new layouts for game library. Okay, scrolling, vertical, top, center, bottom. Cover art alignment, so you get to choose the alignment of the cover art. That's kind of nice. So you can change the cover art size. Game titles show background image. So you, there's a lot of customization here that you can only really do on this on something like the Steam Deck with Decky Loader. That's pretty Pretty cool new way to find a game with my favorites okay nice wait hold on okay okay so your favorites are sort of sorted out you can go to your favorites cool grid view list view uh the list view is nice i'm gonna stick to the grid or the horizontal view i think the horizontal view looks kind of nice looks very steam os inspired um share your button mappings um share your game profile with the community or use a game profile shared by others that's kind of nice okay cool and there we go. New UI, new armory create, new ROG ally. Not a lot to complain about, really. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you going to be upgrading? Um, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Anyways, I'm Blaze2K. Okay. Check the links down below for some really cool links. Um, check out Pixelbuys over on X um, if you haven't already. Links down below. Subscribe, follow Pixelbuys on X. You won't regret it, I promise. And um, yeah, hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon down below. And um. Thank you for being part of this community as well. Special thanks to all our members over here who support everything I do, who click that join button down below and help me keep doing what I do. And if you want my opinion, if you just want to see me play some games here and there, if you just want me to remain on YouTube and help, help me stay here and do what I do, then you can become a member. You don't have to. Just clicking a like on every video really helps out. Anyways, I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I'm Blaze2K. Okay.